Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. New toys arrived. I bought a bread maker. There is nothing nicer than the smell of fresh baking bread or cakes or something like that. Apart from perhaps fresh, freshly brewed coffee. <laughs> but it's, it's just something I've fancied doing for a while. And I've got a bit of spare money at the moment. So I've got my shopping delivered this evening. And in amongst there we have various bread, uh, various flours and yeast and the sort of things I might need. And sometime tomorrow we'll be having a go at a fresh loaf. <laughs> so it's a bit of fun. Another toy that will be arriving soon that I'd rather not have had to buy is I've had to get a new printer. My printer just will not work. Um, it's actually very, very old, come to think of it. So I've ordered another one of those. Um, <laughs> and that is sort of holding up the works at the moment because to send my orchid back I've got to print the returns label. Uh, the guy sent a returns label and what he sent was a tiny little photograph in an eBay message which is totally useless. You can't print that. You know it's about an inch by an inch and I, tried, well, I, I basically extracted it and got it onto my computer and took it into my photo editing software and tried to enlarge it and the quality is so abysmal it won't enlarge and I can't use it as it is. So I've had to send him yet another message and saying can you basically send a proper label please? Um, if necessary you email it to me but um, Either way, when, when I do get the proper label, I still can't print it, so I'm going to have to wait for the printer now, but that, it's only a two-day delivery. Right, let's get and open some orchids. More new orchids. But before we get on to the uh, getting the orchids out of the box, um, let's move back a bit to where the last orchids came from, my visit to Burnham's. And I noticed today on Facebook that Sarah has started a YouTube channel. That's very brave. <laughs> I don't know what will be posted on there, but she started off with about as simple as you can get, a very simple repotting a Phalaenopsis video. Short and sweet, um, mass a mass of orchids in the background. Uh, none of us can achieve that, that's for sure. Um, but yes, so, um, Basically, uh, my videos from Burnham's, which was effectively four, there was the growing areas, the sales areas, the orchids from Zena, and then my orchid haul, which has got probably the highest number of views I've ever got on a video in the first couple of days. Um, so what I'd like you to do, if you wouldn't mind, and if you feel it's okay, um, the channel is just called Burnham Nurseries, not Burnham's, just Burnham. So it's B-U-R, <coughs> Burnham Nurseries. I'll put a link to it um, on this video. But it might be nice to get Sarah going, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I've always said one of the hardest things is getting a channel off the ground in the first place. And to have a channel that goes with probably the only decent orchid nursery left in um, in the UK is pretty good stuff you know I mean the Facebook page has been there ages they've got their website and all that sort of stuff but a YouTube channel puts the person in the frame that's the difference um, so you get to see Sarah um, with all her massive blooms <laughs> in the background as I say none of us can do that can we um, and a simple repot as an introduction to a new orchid channel. Now obviously the nursery itself has got an awful lot of followers so she will get subscribers and views to her um, videos as and when she posts them. She may never post another one again. I don't know what's going to happen with this channel but it's nice that she's decided to embrace the social media, the likes of the Facebook there's probably an Instagram, although I don't know. Um, and now a YouTube channel. This, this is good stuff. I mean, a lot of people just get buried in the past and set in their ways. So it, it's good that she's venturing out. And it might be nice if some of us go and support the channel. And give it a kickstart. Might be quite nice. 
<laughs> I've been asking enough about people kicking mine on to get to that 10k subscribers. So that perhaps we could do something for somebody else and um, give her channel a bit of a kickstart. It's not an elaborate introductory video, it's just a simple repot, you know. Um, but perhaps we can expect more and better things. But the simple way to get a channel to move and encourage somebody to post more videos is to give it that kickstart and get over there and subscribe and like the video. So uh, a simple ask, you choose. Um, it's obviously more relevant to people in the UK um, and to a degree the EU. Um, you know, she does post to the EU for her mail order stuff, but um, um, She's a popular figure around the shows, you know, the, um, the national shows, um, the individual society shows that she attends year in, year out. Um, you know, and often there's people that have got collections of orchids, especially people who grow in the home, that have only ever bought their orchids from Sarah. So, you know, she provides a good service. So it's good stuff. Anyway, see what you can do. Um, I'll put the link and uh, we'll go from there. Right, well we can tell where they're from straight away and having done this I feel a bit guilty now. These two plants um, were for sale at Burnham's um, and I, I ummed and ahed in my mind, do I want to take those home or not? And I'm, you know, I, I, I thought, I'm not exactly cheap. Um, and in the end I came away without them. And then I was just looking around on eBay to see what was new, which for me is how I use eBay. I've got some saved sellers and I go on to look at their items and look at newly listed. That way I don't have to go through the whole lot every time. All I need to do is look at the ones with the recent date on. And as soon as the date changes to the older stuff, I know I've already looked at that, so I don't need to bother. I mean, some of the sellers have got flipping 10 pages worth. Um, so anyway, um, and I saw these on um, speciotic plants and I looked at the price and I thought that's quite a lot cheaper and by combining plants you, you, know, you get a reasonable discount on the postage too. <laughs> and I messed that up, didn't I? I? I put the two items, so yes there's two in here, in the basket like I normally do and when I came to actually check out and pay I messed up. I don't quite know how, but I got the you know the, the 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 running total with the amount to pay included the full postage for both of the items. I couldn't work out how to do it because <laughs> by the time you get to that stage, you've sort of committed to pay. You're halfway through the process, so <laughs> I had to, had to send a message <laughs> saying, "Help! I've messed up. Can you bail me out?" And I got a message back quite quickly, in fact, saying it's all sorted. And I went in again and the uh, appropriate total was there with the reduced postage. I don't know what I did wrong. Obviously not concentrating, but um, it's not like I haven't done that before. <laughs> oh, come on knife, go in there. All right, go in the other way then, please yourself. Just trying to make it right-handed rather than upside down. I'm having to be very careful with all boxes that I get at the moment because I'm getting to the point where I really am going to send those um, orchids off to the people and I need good boxes. And I need a hell of an assortment of sizes because I haven't got a clue what I'm going to need. Um, I mean some people will need quite a big box because they've got a few plants. Others have only got one plant and won't need a big box. And I'd better get that out of the way or well, that's going to get knocked over isn't it? Oh, it's a sin. Crime and a sin. Right over there, out of the way. No chance of it going over there. Right, it's quite a big box. So what we've got are quite large plants. And in theory, they should be in bloom. Trouble is, obviously, when you've got a, a site that takes their pictures of their newly arrived plants um, to go on the internet, um, to go on eBay. They were in bloom then, but they might not sell that quickly. And by the time they actually come around to sell, they might not still be in bloom. 
Now, I don't worry about those sort of things. It's all done with the best of intentions. And when somebody says it's, you know, with spikes, I've never been let down yet. And quite honestly, it's the other way round. I've had plants arrived in bloom that I wasn't expecting. So, right. Now, what we've got in here, the slightly bent over spike and blooms that are just starting to go. I not worry too much about that. They'll come again. There's this one. I doubt if this has got an ID. It's into generic. Cambria. <laughs> somebody actually, I'll go over this now actually, somebody actually left a comment that they, that they believed that Cambria just meant an orchid that's not a Phalaenopsis. And that's actually not a bad rendering as that word goes now. But this originally was a proper intergeneric name and it meant the content was specific, yeah? So it did mean something. It meant that in this plant, in this intergeneric, is some of this, some of this, and some of this. I think there were three. And don't ask me which ones, because I don't know. So originally, that was a genuine article. Um, so, uh, but they change, you know, like, you know, if something had, um, say, odontoglossum, Oncidium and Brassia, and somebody creates an intergeneric name for those three. Then the Oncidium gets taken out of the Oncidiums and put in something like Gamesa or one of the others, and the Odontoglossums got reclassified as Oncidium, so suddenly it's not what it was. You see what I mean? So the intergeneric name that specified what was in it is now wrong. So it's e it either needs a new one, and sometimes there is one. Sometimes the, the, the lower level change is such that it turns it from this intergeneric into this one. So it's actually got a name. Anyway, um, this as a plant, without taking the sellotape off, has got a large new growth here, a new growth pushing out here, not long started, and another new growth over here. And it also grows rather large pseudo bulbs. And again, the three bulbs it's got on it have got a small one, half buried, one that's quite a lot bigger, that probably bloomed, difficult to tell, not necessarily. And then the latest large pseudo bulb that does have a spike, enormous thickness to these spikes. Um, and three new growths. So as a plant, that's a good plant. Let's get the um, sellotape off. And three new growths is good stuff. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, somewhere down the line, looking at the size of the new growths, two of them are similar. So down the line, there'll be two spikes at roughly the same time that will be in bloom together followed by the one that's following on behind. So a third spike will follow on behind, you know, possibly a month later, three weeks, a month. Now, this has got very fine bark in it. Now, whether the plant's been topped up or not, I don't know. But I'm not going to risk like I often do and try and see if I can ease it out of the pot. We won't do that. Um, get our uh, stick out of the way. That's not to hold the spike up. This one is. That is to stop the um, plant rolling about in the box. Now I'll show you these blooms if I can get close up. They are unusual. Now, there's a lot of Miltonia in here. I can see that a mile off. Probably Regnellii, come to think of it, looking at the shape and that purple colour. Um, but um, when these blooms are relatively recently opened, the two lower sepals close behind the lip and stay there. So it takes on quite an unusual shape. It's got the quite large lip with the sort of frills and then the two petals sticking out either side and the upright sepal sticking up but the two lower sepals curl round the back of the plant. Gives it a very unusual look. And when I was looking at it at um, Burnham's it almost put me off. But now this one's arrived, um, 
and the sepals are moved out on the bloom. So I think under normal circumstances it changes its shape as it ages. So we've certainly got a nice looking plant there. As plants go, just trying to ease the bark away. See now this new growth here is just showing its new roots. Just showing the new roots. And that is the largest new growth. This one hasn't started yet and this one is obviously tucked up in there so even if it pushes roots out there this is this is the downside of some of the um, Oncidium type intergenerics. Miltoniopsis do this a lot. Um, what happens is they're so vigorous they push out their new growth before these lower leaves have gone. So if you look round here it's just like a raw bulb and the new growth has managed to find its way out and its new roots will go straight down in the bark. But this new growth here, this is still hanging on to this green leaf and this is a sturdy leaf that's well attached. Yeah. So what will happen is if the new roots come out now, they will grow up inside this leaf and go skywards and they will never get down to the media because they won't turn around and go back again if this leaf is taken off late. So it often pays to very, very carefully get a pair of scissors or something and snip these, yeah? So that the base of the new growth can see the light of day and it will push the roots downwards then and not go skywards. This one's okay, this one's okay, this one I'll look at later. I've got new roots here, none here yet, but I know they're going to come soon. This, this growth over this side of the plant is not that far behind this one. So a couple of weeks and this one will be introducing its new roots. Um, new roots on there will be quite a while yet. Um, so this, in a couple of weeks when it's had time to settle down in here, those blooms are not going to last too much longer. They are on their way out. Um, I would suggest that uh, this will get repotted. Yeah. because I'll have the new roots growing and I might wait and let the new roots get going a bit on this one and these at least start so I've got like two sets of new roots knowing that these are going to follow on as well so uh, that's number one and that's got a, a healthy bit of Miltonia in it definitely uh, partly due to the colour and certainly due to the shape uh, do you know we're running out of space in here again I'm going to have to throw some plants away. It just needs rearranging. I've got whole shelves with nothing on them. And what I've got is smaller plants taking up space on the shelves that are good for larger plants. I need a shuffle round, as usual. Right, and the next one. Again, another intergeneric. <laughs> it's got its plast passport passport on the pot that says a uh, odontoglossum no an odontoglossum <laughs> the only time I disagree with that logic of whether it is a uh, a uh, followed by a um, non uh, I've forgotten what they're called now a e i o u r uh, something or others, types of letters. And if a word starts with that, you precede it with an. And the exception, sometimes words beginning with H also have an in front of them instead of a. Uh. But the one that sounds wrong is hotel. Because officially, if you follow the rules, it should be an hotel. Well, that just sounds daft. It's a hotel. <laughs> Still, rules of English are um, quite honestly there to be messed about because there is English is not really a language. It's a, it's a hodgepodge of all sorts of other languages from other countries. So I don't know why we make such a big deal out of it, quite honestly. But there are rules the same as there are with all languages. Now this is very wet for a start, and we don't have any new growths on this one, and we basically have a two bulb. Um, plant. So uh, there hasn't been a lot of growing on going on with this one. 
Um, and this one's going to have to rely on the roots it's got for some time and it's very wet so it needs to be allowed to dry. But, um, have a look at the blooms on this. They are large, multi-patterned and their little bit of um, delicateness is on the lip because although it's a standard sort of bit of brassia in their shape, you know, the star sort of shape, the lip has got the typical purple that you would get following from a Miltonia, possibly. The spots are often indications of odontoglossum in there, but this has got a pale lemon yellow edge to the lip. And where on earth that's come from? I haven't got a clue and it varies in size it's quite pronounced on this top bloom and yet it's just just a, just on the edge on this one here but anyway I like the colors I like the shape I like the pattern um, as I say the uh, the blooms themselves have got a bit tangled up between the stake all that needs doing is the uh, clip needs moving down away from the blooms like that and then they're not so squashed up so this bloom around the back's actually got tangled up between the uh, stake and the spike itself it may sort itself out probably not now been open too long anyway it's an attractive bloom and a plant that will need a bit of molly coddling because of the state of play I've got it in yeah and with no new growths I'm not going to get new roots to work with so this one's got to sit for a while and it may just be that it, it needs the blooms to finish to, to trigger those um, uh, a new growth maybe not maybe one will come in the not too distant future but there's certainly no sign of one at the moment so um, we will have to wait and hope we don't have to wait too long, but the first thing to do is look at your plant when you get one like this. Weight, it's heavy. Colour, soaking wet. Perhaps it was dry before it was posted, so it got a good soak to set it on its way. It's mainly cocoa fibre, but just teasing a bit away. We've got roots down in there. I would imagine it's got a good root system. Um, but it does need to dry right out now totally so that it weighs nothing and then we can start watering it again gently to see how much it'll take before any comes out of the bottom and with this type of media that's how I water them I let them go dry weightless because it weighs nothing um, you have to allow for the weight of the plant especially if it's in bloom but you get to judge that and then when it's dry I start trickling water until I see it come out the bottom and then I stop. That's enough. Because if I water it like I do my normal bark, it would end up being so heavy and so soggy and so wet, you know, it would probably stay wet too long. So that's that one. Again, no name. Um, just, <laughs> well, it, as I said, it does say a uh, odontoglossum. And it's got odontoglossum in it. And it's probably got Miltonia in it as well. So now we've got to find somewhere to... I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to start putting plants back on this area. Um, I use this area a lot when I'm watering. You know, I water a plant, stick it on there, water a plant, stick it on there, until I've cleared a shelf off. And then I put them back and clear this off and then do another shelf. But um, I can't really afford this amount of space and this is the area that I like to use for stuff that's in bloom because I can see it from the house clearly from the house which is what I like. That's the real bonus of having this place attached to the house with this huge door. Yeah, I can see my orchids in bloom while I'm in the house. Yeah. So uh, it works. So there we go, two new plants, nice ones. Let me take the work out, I suppose. There we go. I'll take that in. Mm -hmm. It's going to fall on the floor. Right, so uh, another useful box. That should 
I'll put the newspaper in there as well. And um, yeah, so two more orchids. Me not buying orchids has gone out the window now. I, I, I just went back thinking that um, I'm, you know, I've got periods with no blooms or very few. And the, and the reason is the ones that have gone missing. The Night of the Long Knives was a massive clear out and the majority of the ones that went were the Oncidium intergenerics. Ones that had um, either had Fusarium or arrived with bad roots and just didn't recover properly. Um, so that was a lot of what went. So a little bit of replacement I think is in order. My total number of plants is still an awful lot less than it was before I started that clear out and I'm still sitting on about 15 plants to go to other people some of which are quite reasonable sized ones so there's there's space waiting to happen I just need to get on with it <laughs> okay two more orchids to add to the list and uh, we'll see where we go from there this has actually got some um, unopened buds on here but certainly the top one looks like it might have blasted We'll see. It might carry on and swell. Don't think it will though. Never mind. It's got a good good spike on there. I'm happy with that. And uh, see you next time.